Hello and welcome back and today I want to do a hardware review of the brand new QNAP TS230. This is their brand new budget 2 bay NAS for home and small business users and by small business I am talking real small business. This device arrives for around 150 to 160 quid without your local tax or hard drive or SSD media and it's probably one of the most affordable NASs I've seen in a few years. What I'm going to talk about today is a lot about what the hardware can and cannot do, and moreover, give you some idea about the design of this and whether it suits you. Now, you may have noticed the camera is super close here. The majority of this video, I want you to focus on this, not this. So, I'm probably going to be up here, hello, and for the most part, this is what you're going to want to look at. So, what do we know about this device? Well, it arrives with a Realtek-based CPU. It arrives with the um, RTD1296, which is a 1.4 gigahertz processor, 64-bit ARM, and that quad-core is 1.4 gigahertz per core. It also arrives with an impressive 2 gig of DDR4 memory, a big old leap up on the DDR3 of its predecessor, and overall, it's quite a lot of hardware inside for that 150, 160 quid. I will also say that the chassis is a brand new chassis, from QNAP, lots of design tweaks here, and it arrives in this light blue design. I know the light kind of tricks it a bit to make it look white, but if you look at white here, we can get some idea about just how blue it is. Yeah, so it's not a trick of the eye. And again, this is a hardware review, so I'm not going to be doing like a full unboxing, that's on the other channel. But if you want to know what this arrives with inside, I can tell you right now, it arrives with warranty information, it arrives with screws for two and a half inch and three and a half inch media, it arrives with uh, information on extending your warranty to five years, I believe there's an additional cost there. There's a UK mains lead, there's an external power brick that I'm going to talk about later, and a 1GBE, uh, oh sorry, a Cat5e cable there for the 1 gigabit Ethernet RJ45 connection, and quick start installation guide too. So again, we'll get rid of all of those accessories with the exception of that PSU. Uh, this device does utilise an external power brick. Uh, and the external power brick on here, I personally like external power bricks because if they do break, it's the second most fragile part of any NAS, at least it can be exchanged very, very easily. So again, external power brick, around 65 watts, I believe, and the power consumption and indeed the noise level of this device should already be on screen um, at the start of the video. Who knows? If it's not, stick it on now. Is it there? Who knows? Right, so the device itself in this brand new chassis, I wasn't sure about this chassis the first time I saw it. The first time I heard about this device was at the closing stages of 2019, and I wasn't bowled over by it. A lot of the light blue design, I wasn't a big fan of that. And moreover, I just thought it looked a bit rudimentary. But now I've actually got one here, and I've got it in the flesh and seen a lot of the design curves and choices internally and externally, I have come around on it. There's a lot of little tweaks and performance things about this which have limited noise and also have kind of created a very compact two-bay now chassis. It's a little deeper than I thought it would be there, but I quite like the front design. So let's talk about that a little bit, shall we? Now, the front of the device there, as you can see on screen, it's got that nice blue flush there. And if we bring it a little bit closer, you can see at the top, um, the LED um, holes there, which denote system access, system activity, drive access, and overall status of the device. Moving down, we've got a power button and a USB 3 port with a USB 3 copy button. So let's talk about that a little bit straight away. I know it's really, really boring when I talk about US3, uh, USB 3 copy buttons there, but what I will say is this doesn't half make things easier for backing up portable drives. If you're a college student, uni, photographer, someone that has an external drive they use regularly, like myself, I produce, I would say, around 10 to 12 gigabytes of data per day on some of these videos and the photos that I take, and having a one-touch copy is incredibly useful to me because it allows me to just get home connect the drive, one click, and then I go and have my dinner or something, come back and the job is done. And it will also safely disconnect the drive at the end. And again, there's lots of ways you can do a differential backup, you can do um, a synchronization backup, you can do a time managed backup where it creates a new folder every single time. And it can be done from the NAS to the drive or the drive to the NAS, it works both ways. So with a big enough external drive, you can create a, another tier to your backup strategy using that port. So again, I'm glad it's on here, and I know it's not exactly the most exciting feature, but for a 150, 160 drive, they could have saved a few quid and not included that, so I'm really glad they did. Now, in terms of ventilation, 
That is an area where I'm not 100% certain. This uh, nice panel here on the top, if we get the light just right, you can see those lines there. That is not ventilation there. If you look at the sides, we've got that embossed QNAP logo. And that is not ventilation there. I'm sorry about the brightness of the light there coming in. If we look at the base of the device, we can take a look and we can see lots of ventilation there but on the base, underneath each of the media bays, as well as on those controller boards working in conjunction with the active fan on the rear that can be adjusted. The RPM can be done automatically or it can be done uh, manually to up, uh, increase or decrease the RPM in terms of the temperature of the room that you're in to stop heat affecting the performance or to lower the RPM in case they get a bit noisy. I say noisy, this device is not going to make a lot of noise. Only the fan is in operation and it's a very small eight centimeter fan. And on top of that, Unless you're using enterprise level hard drive, some of the you know helium sealed or 7200 RPM with like a real heavy amount of cash, they're not gonna produce much noise and clicks and whirs much either unless they're top end. So this is going to be quite a quiet little two bay NAS. Now if we look at the rear of the device, we can have a look at those ports, connections and fan. Now the fan is a slightly tweaked design on what we've seen before. I'm not sure about this square panel, it looks a bit old school IBM, but the fan inside is actually a little deeper than some of the fans that we've seen previously. And on top of that, the um, cooling on this works slightly differently internally. I'll show you in a bit when I open it up. Now, let's talk about that port, the 1GBE port that this device arrives with. Now, the 1GBE port inside this device is not great it is an affordable now so i'm not going to be as harsh about one gbe on this nas hat in the same way that i've been with some of the more flagship series where i've demanded that they should be 2.5 gbe or more in this day and age what i will say for this nas at this price point we'll let one gbe fly and additionally with that realtek cpu and two gig of memory inside it's going to be working quite hard if you were to try and max out this connection we have seen realtek processors um, well, not real time. I think some of the Annapurna arriving with 2.5 GBE ports, but even then, you're going to be pushing that CPU pretty hard for 2.5 GBE. So maybe if this had been lag, but even then, two 1 GBE ports would have upped that price. And at 150, 160, and the target demographic in mind for this device, I think that port's absolutely fine. But what I do have a slight problem with is USB 3 and USB 2. USB 3, lovely, bigger, faster external drives, fantastic. Bigger peripheral devices supported, fantastic. USB 2, it's 2020. That's a disappointment. USB 2, I could understand on some of their other devices, which are KVM, keyboard video mouse supported. And that means with keyboard video mouse that you don't need USB 3. Those devices can't take advantage of the power or speed given. With USB 2 arriving at just 480 megabits or 48 megabytes per second, compared with the five gigabits or 500 megabytes possible with USB 3. There aren't a lot of USB 2 compatible devices out there that you should care about. And I just think these USB ports could be used for expansions if they were supported, or they could be used for peripheral devices, neither of which are recommended on a USB 2 port. But that's neither here nor there. This is still an affordable device. I'm just not hugely happy about USB 2 these days. This external power port for that PSU mentioned, and that's really it for the external design. It's a little deeper, as I mentioned, than I would have thought, but with regards to the hardware and this plastic chassis, I actually quite like it. It's um, slightly bigger, I think, than a number of other NAS devices in terms of, you know, just general chassis, but only because of the height, because of the drives being top loaded into this device, unlike other devices which utilize the front. So if you measured this up, vertically i'm sorry horizontally it would be very similar and in fact i do have a comparison between this and the synology ds 2020 uh 2020j or 220j even if you want to say the word correctly rob um that when that comparison happens i will compare these two chassis and their scale but the fact that this is top loaded makes all the difference with those ventilation holes built into the bottom slightly raised over those rubberized free to let that air out now if we open this bad boy up we can remove that chassis and I have already removed the screw at the bottom in advance. So don't worry, it doesn't always come off that easily. We can talk about the internal design of this NAS. Now, unlike previous iterations of the more affordable series, this device does arrive with trays. 
I don't think it's listed as hot swap, but I will say there's not a lot stopping you hot swapping this device. The trays themselves are click and load tray. So again, no screwdriver required to install a hard drive. It's very simple. Remove the sides, get your hard drive. And again, you will need a SATA based drive. Pop the drive inside and wallop, you are done. It is that straightforward to install the drive. And I will add that this device only needs one drive to function. It supports up to two, but you don't need to fully populate it. And it does support the very latest Seagate drive, some of those 16 TB Iron Wolf NAS hard drives so with a potential 32 terabytes of RAID 0 or unrated storage. Or in a RAID 1, you can get 16 terabytes utilizing those new drives. But bear in mind, those new drives, because they're enterprise-led, 7200, um, sealed in a very enterprise way, they will make a bit more noise. It will kind of slightly invalidate the low noise qualities of this device. Now, if we take a look inside, we can have a look at that fan I mentioned earlier on and take a better look at it there. And it's just a fraction deeper in terms of the cat cavity there. And again, a much, I think I'm quite impressed with that design there of the fan there. And it's not behind the drives in the same way. These drives are top loaded into those SATA bays that you can see there at the top. And the fan is going here and the air is being pushed down and out the base of the device where those ventilation holes are that we talked about earlier there. Um, the CPU, that Realtek processor, is based underneath that heatsink. And it's worth highlighting once again that you cannot upgrade the memory on this device. The two gig is all you're getting. And that's because the memory is completely not interchangeable. So it is worth bearing in mind that as affordable as this device is, as mentioned in the NAS Compare review that I'm subtly indicating in the description below, this device does arrive with a glass ceiling. And it's worth highlighting that if you are utilizing this device um, for you know business endeavors, you're not gonna be able to upgrade the memory, you're not gonna be able to upgrade the connections, you're not gonna be able to change the CPU if you're a PC builder out there. What you are seeing is what you are getting on day one and day 500. So do bear that in mind if you are going to be investing in one of these devices. It is incredibly affordable, definitely at, at that price point. This is probably one of the most affordable QNAP NAS I've seen for a very long time. And that CPU does open the door to a number of different software applications, some of which are highlighted on that pretty little retail box there. And again, we go into more detail on the review, lots of information there about the device. And QTS does arrive with a lot of support on this device. QTS um, has, for example, the Photo Station, Video Station, Music Station application to allow you to enjoy your multimedia both over DLNA and over the internet very, very easily. And it is supported both um, directly on Mac, Windows, Android, and Linux um, OS systems like Ubuntu. But also there's client applications you can install on those mobile and desktop devices that allow you to access and synchronize your data in a more um, tailored way. There is the Surveillance Application Surveillance Center available on this device, but I will highlight that QVR Pro is not available, nor are any HDMI applications because this device does not have the horsepower or indeed the connection to utilize graphical endeavors. It does support 4K and 1080p transcoding, but although you can use Plex on it, Plex will not be able to take advantage of that transcoding engine. And if you try to transcode big files in Plex utilizing this, you will be sorely disappointed. For those that aren't aware, transcoding is when a file is changed in transit between the NAS and the client device, like a TV or an iPad or something, and that needs the file changed to be more compatible or smaller if you're accessing over the internet. Utilizing this for transcoding in Plex? No, 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 don't do that. But it does support some of QNAP's great first party applications very, very well. For example, Hybrid Backup Sync 3. It supports a myriad of different ways to back up your data, both with third party clouds, locally over USB, or NAS to NAS, all of them within this device, utilizing that one software to create a multi tiered backup approach between your devices and the NAS. In terms of um, Photo Station, although this does arrive with that Photo Station application, it also arrives with QMaggie. QMaggie, the AI photo recognition software that allows you to upload years and years of photos onto this, and then the AI will analyze all of those photos and produce a list of all the people in the photos, as well as identifying things in pictures, food, fish, sea, just subjects in general. And then, when you're searching your photos, even though the photos are named like image 3962 or named after the date or whatever, 
the AI recognition scans the photos and then tags each of the photos internally of what's in the actual physical uh, the image itself, along with scanning metadata in the background for what device took the, uh, the photo, what the aperture was, and even geolocational data embedded in the metadata of pictures taken on mobile phones and more. Along with that, the device also supports multimedia console. Multimedia console is a great application for intelligent and customizable scanning of indexes internally. What that means in real terms is the device will allow you to, it will produce um, thumbnails and more as well as um, index the correct folders on your device if you go for more customized directories for all of your media rather than forcing you to put all of your photos, music or video in preset folders. Along with photo, I'm sorry, file station that allows you to browse all of your files very easily on a file manager with added benefits of things like virtual JBOD, hybrid mount, and queue filing and queue search, giving you a much easier and intelligent way to scan the files on your NAS as if they were locally on your PC. Now, a lot of that is going to be network dependent, as well as how many of the people are accessing this device simultaneously at any given time. What I will say is for this price, this is giving you a hell of a lot for your money. And for that reason alone, I think it does deserve your data if you are a budget buyer. So before you go, let me take one last moment to tell you the difference between cheap and budget. This device for me is budget. It's cost effective. It does give you a lot for your money. It's not cheap. The difference being, if it was cheap, it means you are paying less for less. Right now, you're paying less for more. And if this device, if your budget for your network attached storage is, you know, less than 500 quid and you want to go for maximum capacity, this may well be the NAS for you. It allows you to leverage a lot of your spending towards hard drives, but it doesn't limit you to that. You can get away with sticking just a simple 1TB drive inside this device and maybe without tax, get away with spending less than 200 quid, which is pretty impressive. But bear in mind that this will arrive with that glass ceiling. And if you do go for this device in anything other than a network backup to add another tier of data storage strategy to your backup, then you may come away a little bit underwhelmed later down the line. If you're a small business though, or a photographer looking to simply back up your photos nice and easily, this may well be the device for you. Now do check out the hardware review in the description below that goes you, that takes you to NAS Compares, a lot more information there. And do click subscribe if you want to learn more about this and other NAS, as well as my comparisons between this and a few devices coming very, very soon. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Click like if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. Bye.